I did the Dalton first, then I did the Dempster, and when I did the Dempster, it was like, yeah, Dempster every time. It's it's different, it's quiet, there's not many people there, and it broke me. So yeah, it, it broke me, it broke the bike, and all I say is if you're gonna get new tires, don't get ones with massive gaps between the blocks, because the Dempster will eat your tires alive. Moxie, Greg, and I are riding around the world to raise $100,000 for the nonprofit Girl Up. We're donating 10% of roughly sales to the fundraiser and posting a new episode every week. It's a big dog on two wheels adventure for girls empowerment. So follow along and please lend your support. By all accounts, Salmon Glacier is absolutely gorgeous. But the fact is that we're up here and it's misty and I guess mist could be beautiful, but it's not uncommon that like you'll watch a vlog or whatever and everything is always beautiful. Everywhere they go, everything they do, everything is always beautiful. But I mean, to say that the view is beautiful <laughs> when you can't actually see anything I mean, this is the point. If it's like to share the experience, then there's the ups, downs, and the I don't knows because I can't see it. The view from here is spectacular. <laughs> so much better than what you have over there. Tell me what you see, Greg. I can see all the mist from here. <laughs> from there you can see certain amount of mist and you can see this rock. <laughs> but from here, I don't have this rock in the way. So I can all the mist. Well, I'm glad you're viewing that. You take a picture for us. Five star. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm, I've got a picture of it right here. <laughs> The Forest Service Ranger, who was nice enough to put Moxie in his truck while we went and watched the non-existent bears and non-existent salmon run so that the non-existent bears could catch them. He told us about this wild campsite. It's a clearing here, a little bit off the highway. Highway, the, the road that goes up to the glacier. And so it's absolutely fantastic. And his words were, it's good that it's this clearing because she can run around, meaning Moxie and because you have space for a bear before it gets you from the forest. So that was a bit ominous, but it's a fantastic site, plenty of space. We're all alone here. We had one visit from an older guy who's a retired forest service ranger who just kind of comes out and likes to look around. And he was a really nice guy and had actually heard about Moxie riding on the back of Jess's bike because the gas station in Stewart on the British Columbia side, the attendant had taken a photo and I guess has been telling people. <laughs> and the communities are that small that within a matter of a few hours, the word had spread like this amazing fire that I've made. These mosquito netty things are fantastic to cover your face. You can't eat with them on, you gotta like stick it under, but it's good for when you're just sitting around the campsite and there's a bunch of mosquitoes. But for tonight, I made a baked uh, camarade with uh, garlic and thyme and some white wine. I obviously couldn't bake it. I was surprised that we had the fire. I wasn't expecting it. I didn't have tin foil. I could have baked it, but we, I sort of baked it in here. It got nice and gooey and warm and hot. And then some, some bread with some olive oil and some thyme. I've also got some sweet peppers for dipping. I thought this would be a nice little treat by the by the fire tonight. Can't wait till I finish one to take the other. We are discussing which branch of which tree we should hang our bear box from. And our bear box is one of my aluminum panniers. That tree and that branch. It is that tree and that branch. Clear as fucking day. <laughs> If you like what we're doing, here's how you can support the Go Roughly Around the World adventure. You can donate to our Girl Up fundraiser, become a Patreon supporter, purchase Roughly gear for your dog and everyone you know, and of course, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much, and now back to the adventure.
It is not early in the morning. It is well past 8 o'clock. And yet, this morning has long been underway. It rained and drizzled intermittently overnight, which meant that everything was damp. There's one clear benefit, and that is you can use puddles around your campsite to do the dishes. It's essentially beautifully clean water because it's come from the sky. But if you're concerned, you do your dishes, and then you can rinse them with your drinking water and save some of your proper drinking water. This level of moxie vigilance is clearly related to a small creature. A squirrel or a chipmunk or a gopher. That's when she gets into her laying semi-attack position, super alert, ears shooting forward like darts. If it was a big creature, cow, goat, sheep, elk. horse, elk, deer, she would be barking and running around and making a lot of hoo. However, we're all looking where Moxie's looking, which means a bear or a cougar could sneak up behind us just like a ninja or a velociraptor, and we'd have no idea. Yeah, but the truth is nobody is coming right now with this whisper light stove that we've got going on. This thing whispers like a fucking cannon shot. <laughs> <laughs> Totally smoked, wind changed, wind changed, smoked out. Fuck. Eyeballs on fire. When we leave here, we go back into Hyder, which is Alaska, we'll cross over into Stewart, which is BC again, and then we will go to the junction, and that will lead us up north of the 57. Hi! That's new! <laughs> Hello! This is Moxie. Hi. Moxie. She's friendly. She just wants to be loved. She wants her face rubbed. Hi. Moxie. All right, let's start with the password here. Moxie, wait. How long were we over for? We were here just last night, yesterday and last night. Did you camp over there then? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not at this place, but further up. Oh, okay, gotcha. Up at yeah. the glacier, I'm assuming? Yeah. Okay. Anything coming back with you guys? No, no nothing, nothing from here, no. Gotcha. No firearms, weapons, or bear spray with any of you? No, no bear spray, no. Any no alcohol, firearms. tobacco, or cannabis? Sorry? Liquor? Any alcohol, any tobacco? No. no. Any cannabis products? No. no. Any food, plants, animal products that I gotta worry about besides this really friendly dog? <laughs> no. <laughs> I know, just the no. creature. Gotcha, okay. Uh, you guys sit tight, I'll be right back, okay? Okay. Sure. I don't know if we'll make it to Watson Lake or Upper in the Yard area up there, which would be starting in the Yukon today, but that's sort of the goal on that stretch. And the next stretch would be on our way up to Watson. So a couple of great things happened today. The first one is that the rain broke eventually in the morning, and we had some spectacular views of the mountains and even of one of the glaciers in the area. Always have your hairdresser uh, prep you before you start recording. The other thing is, as we were stopped looking at one of the views, a couple of riders pulled up. Turned out to be a couple of really nice people, really great people. And as a result, we got some fantastic information about both the Dalton and the Dempster highways because they had basically gone to both. And it sounds like the Dempster is really the way to go. I did the Dalton first, then I did the Dempster. So they're both good, first of all, right? They're both good, and they're both tick boxes, yeah? And when I did the Dempster, it was like, yeah, Dempster every time. It's, it's different, it's quiet, there's not many people there, and it broke me. So yeah, it, it broke me, it broke the bike, and all I say is if you're gonna get new tires, don't get ones with massive gaps between the blocks because the Dempster will eat your tires alive. If you're a bit throttle happy like me, there's me, Mr. X, but adventure rider. I know what I'm doing. I've got all the gear. Yeah, it got me. Uh, so the blocks on the tire are so far apart that the actual type of rocks on the Dempster, it's like shale, it's razor sharp, um, went between the blocks 
and cut the tire to bits, right? Absolutely shredded the tire. So I got three flats. They weren't pluggable. You can't plug them because they're all jagged. So I had to put tubes in. Uh, my first tube split. Uh, my second tube ended up getting trashed. And then I had to borrow or use uh, someone else's tube and his valve uh, broke away. It was a 16 inch in an 18 wheel and it ripped the valve out. Um, so I then chopped up my other tubes to go over that and I managed to seal it and I put gaffer tape around it and I managed to get about 300, 400 miles out of it and get to a, a tribe in uh, Fort McPherson and spent a few days with those guys and then contemplated flying tires in and everything else. So it's great experience awesome experience but yeah i learned a big lesson there be gentle on the throttle and get tires with close together groups in terms of beauty and scenery and wildlife dempster every time you know i saw stuff out there did you see a moose yeah i saw the moose okay uh, i saw mascots mm -hmm. that was really cool um and the uh, tombstone mountains are just stunning you get some great pictures out there as well so the beginning was awesome fantastic uh I like this kind of stuff and you can see just gravel nice gravel a little bit potholy but it was all good uh and then from eagle plains onwards kind of nasty uh very deep sections of gravel so kind of four inches deep. so you'll be going along going this is good this is good and then you'll just hit a deep patch and then from Inuvik to Tuck, which is the new section, not officially the Dempster, right? But it's a new section. That is all brand new gravel and it's four inches thick and you will, you will kind of have a few what I call bum twitches. <laughs> this helicopter just landed here dropping a bunch of lumber. So I really hope that like that's not how every piece of lumber is dealt with because that would be some really expensive lumber if everyone had to be pulled out and then dropped with a helicopter. But that's how they just did it. So kind of cool to see. After wild camping last night in Alaska, we're back in British Columbia, a few hundred kilometers further north this evening and we've been keeping an eye on the sides of the roads there's some turnouts there's occasionally logging roads but in terms of clearings beside bodies of water which is always nice like lakes rivers really really scarce so we saw a sign for this provincial park so it's like a state forest state park traveling with dog tip that we've discovered is that we always attempt to get the campsite on the end because there's always so many other people with their own pets and this way we at least know that we only have to worry about one side and usually what that means is that moxie can be off leash even if maybe she's not supposed to be we only have one flank to guard So Jess did have a strike. She just didn't manage to hook it, but it it came out of the water as it got hooked and she just, uh, she lost it there at the end. So she's still trying. Meanwhile, on my other side, Moxie is destroying the beach. So she's doing exactly what she was built to do and what gives her the most pleasure. So both of my girls are doing their favorite activities stopping only occasionally put their paws in the water and have a drink. That's Moxie, not Jess. It's fair to say that the conditions are pretty ugly this morning. It is drizzly, it is overcast, it's a bit chilly, and basically just a bit feo in general. And pretty much it's time to hit the road because there's no sitting around in this. Might as well be on the move. We're hoping to cross from BC into Yukon. And that really puts us well within striking distance tomorrow for Whitehorse. Hey, 
This is Moxie. She's attracting all of the mosquitoes. So people tell us about like Northern Canada and Alaska and how the mosquitoes are horrible. And they're 100% true. So we had a our, our face mesh on and that helped. But like for fishing, I should have probably worn gloves even because now my hands are all bit up because they were exposed. There's just no question in my mind, at least at this point in my life's travels, that the Northern mosquito is more badass and really more densely destructive than any other mosquito in the world. We're here in Iskut and we, we pulled up for some gas after a night of camping. And then this morning as we were packing up, of course it starts to rain. Uh, it didn't rain all last night, but then this morning it started to drizzle. So everything got soaked again. And now we're at Iskut and we were able to pick up uh, some supplies for today because we are probably gonna end up camping out again tonight. So we gotta be able to get some food for lunch, for dinner, and then for breakfast tomorrow. And the goal is to get up to around Watson Lake, a little bit uh, further west of Watson Lake because we're going that way up towards Whitehorse. There is so much wood to be found in the forests at all of the campsites we've been at lately. The problem is that whether it's actually raining or it's been raining, everything is damp, which makes it really hard to start a wildfire, right? Like, without help. Therefore, fire starters, courtesy of the Kluachan store. The weather is a little miserable. It does sort of get your spirits down a little. It is nicer to be riding at least than be standing around and being eaten by the mosquitoes, but it's still not exactly what we want to be, <laughs> the weather we want to be riding in. But the views are still beautiful. Uh, you can see above me, there are all of the mountains and that's what we're seeing as we continue on on this stretch. Impromptu stop along the highway to try out some fishing. So there's a bit of a turnoff here that I think is kind of like a rest area and we've got it all to ourselves and there is a bit of access to the river. Looks like a very promising river. It's uh, nicely moving, not too fast. It's deep enough for the lure. So we're gonna give it a go and we'll see if Jess can bring anything in. Jess and I like to do lattes, or actually Jess likes to do a latte, I like to do a cortado, which is the espresso is just cut with milk. And it's hard to find milk out here that's not in a gallon or, or liter size and that goes bad real quick. In Latin America, we can find powdered milk all over the place, but in North America, not so much. So we do creamer, and what we found is the creamer actually works really well just generally as a milk substitute. So. If you want sort of a uh, cereal in the morning at the campsite, if you want to make a an oatmeal, like a hot oatmeal, but have that kind of more milky, thicker flavor, hot chocolate works great. If you like milk with your tea, the creamer works well. And since it's uh, often a non-dairy creamer, that works even better for us since we have the lactose intolerance. After a long morning of rain and drizzle and fog and cold, it is lunchtime. We're in the town of Dees Lake, and it's a nice little town, lovely little town. And we found the very least scenic location in all of Northern British Columbia. So we picked up a few things at that little outpost for lunch today. And so what I got was some French onion uh, Philadelphia dip. I've never had it before. It actually tastes like sour cream and onion chips. So it's lovely. 
some sourdough rye Melba toast. And we had some cheese left. Greg had a salad with some chickpeas in it. We spoke with some of the firefighters who were coming up to the Yukon from, from uh, southern BC to help fight the Yukon fires. So they were from Lillooet in southern BC. And uh, yeah, there's been a lot of fires going on in the Yukon lately and I guess they needed some additional support, so they've come out to help, so that was really nice. And there were a lot of women there too, which was really cool. We left British Columbia today, and we are now in the Yukon. This is the first time we've actually been in this territory. We've uh, made it through British Columbia. We are here today, and what do we need to do? We need to put a sticker on the sticker wall. So is this a place or it's just a No, it's just off the side of the road. Oh. I thought that's what you have. Yeah, that's what we want, like a wild camping, yeah. It's it's there was quite a few mosquitoes, but it was great. Okay. Okay. Great so little five, spot. Five kilometers. Maybe. <laughs> she sure is. <laughs> Oh, cool. Thanks. These guys all yeah, we're on our way to Whitehorse tomorrow, probably. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> nice trip. Thank you. You too. No problem. went off to go get firewood because there actually are insects here when it's not windy uh, they they're coming out and they are causing moxie a lot of grief and she's chasing them all over the place there are these bigger wasp type creatures that are really catching her and she wants to go into the tent and I actually put her inside the tent uh, we actually don't have the fly on it right now because when we were packing it up this morning it was it was damp so we thought we'd let it we let it dry out a little bit so we put her in there, but the problem is when we don't have the fly on it and she uses it as her dog house, she goes crazy trying to get the insects on the outside. And we really don't want her to eat a hole through the tent. So we had to let her out. So right now she is going a little bit crazy. You can see, meanwhile, Greg is over here with his Tillamook collecting firewood to try and uh, so we can start a fire. Having the fire on really keeps the mosquitoes away and, and the insects. So that's what we like to do when we're at these types of campsites is, is try and start a fire. And Greg actually got fire starter, so it should be easier to start today. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to start setting up for dinner. The one concern that I have is there have been a lot of wildfires that are happening in the Yukon. And we had met somebody who actually was turned around from going up past White Horse because of the fires. Hi, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed the episode. Those mosquitoes are pretty terrible. You saw that I was wearing that oh so attractive mesh over my head. It really did help when we were outside and you saw when I was fishing, I was wearing it too. You are really supposed to wear it like with a hat, like Greg's type of Indiana Jones hat that has a brim so that it like will fall in front of your face. Um, but I was wearing it just with my hood on. So it was okay, but it, it wasn't 100%. I did have to like pull at it a little bit to keep it away from my face because otherwise the mosquitoes can just bite right through that if they land on it. And you saw in like all of those uh, videos that we have, we are covered in mosquitoes. And the sad thing is, is for Moxie, I, I don't, I still don't have anything like fantastic for her. She's got her dog house. So we put up the tent and she can go in there. But when we're out and about, like she gets completely bitten, especially when we're, we're getting ready to go and she's up on her cockpit and she's getting ready, we're getting ready and she's just waiting there with her goggles on. At least her rec specs are protecting her eyes from the, the mosquitoes getting in. But the rest of her body, you saw her snout, she was getting mosquitoes, uh, mosquito bites all over it. There's not too much I can do. I've tried that like natural spray for her. It doesn't seem to work really well. I also have the flea and tick, uh, the Advantix 2 for dogs, uh, which you normally use anywhere. And supposedly they, they are supposed to help repel mosquitoes. 
haven't really noticed much of a difference for that but we're we're trying to keep her as limited as possible in those situations by having her her tent up so that she can go into her dog house and just being on the move when we're moving it's not bad but when we're stationary and we're doing activities outside it, it can get it pretty tough and that's one of the things that's difficult about traveling with a dog when there's those extreme situations like you saw we were in the rain and camping in the rain absolutely sucks it is not a pleasurable experience especially when you're setting up in the rain then it's raining all night and then in the morning it's still raining and you gotta pack everything back up when it's soaking wet so that's not fun but what makes it even worse is <clears throat> when you're on the road and I've got Moxie with me, there aren't that many places that we can go for shelter. Like, yeah, we could potentially pull over and put up the tent if it starts to pour um, or find an overhang. But the, the idea of like putting up the tent as you're going, it's it's a lot of hoopla uh, for, you know, for finding getting making yourself a shelter like that if you're still planning to continue on. And finding like an overhang or something like that. Yeah, you can do that for a while, but when it's going to be days and days of rain, uh, which is what it's looking like now, it's going to be, it's tough to find a comfortable place. And we thought about it when we were uh, in BC, when it was raining at some point, we were like, well, we, we could potentially go to a coffee shop when we were in the cities. We could go to a coffee shop or somewhere that's pet friendly. But again, yeah, pet friendly normally means you're out on the patio in, in the elements, which is, which is great because there's great that there's those options, but they're not the best when it's raining. Then we were like, well, we could go to like a pet store, like a pet co or something like that, where they allow you to go in with your pets or a Home Depot or something like that. So there are those options, but when you're out in the middle of nowhere and there, it's not like you can like easily go into a store and like wait out a few hours worth of rain, it can be tough. It's the same, so that's rain, and then it's the same situation when it's really hot out. Like when we were in the States and we were riding through the desert and there was absolutely no shade, like what you gonna do? In those cases, it's almost like it's best to ride at night when it's cool out and the sun isn't beating on you because then at least you're not uh, directly in that heat. And then that way Moxie can stay cool. Like she's got her sun shield when it's sunny um, and that helps reflect some of the sun, but like we're wearing our moto gear. It's miserable for us as well. So it's it's a tough situation. It's something that, that I always have to keep in mind uh, traveling with Moxie. And I think that's what's, what's happening with us with the rains, that it will get better. And at least we are able to sort of recuperate uh, when it stops raining, sort of get a rest from it, get dry, get warm, and then you move on again. So that's that's my thought about riding in extreme weather with your dog. Anyhow, I hope that you guys really enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to follow us on YouTube and at Go Roughly for Facebook and Instagram. Uh, if you come to GoRoughly.com, you're going to see our live GPS tracker. So you're going to see exactly where we are. Um, and don't forget, we have a Patreon page. So if you would like to support our adventure and you, uh, you enjoy these videos that we do, please go over to Patreon and you'll be able to donate what you, whatever you like monthly. And you'll get some additional content from us as well as a thank you for supporting us. Thanks so much for watching guys and we'll talk to you soon.